All right, guys, I'm going to be quoting Mr. Scott Guilford, you know, the guru, the boxing guru writer. Wilder will be a worldwide superstar after he defeats the unbeaten Fury, who many boxing fans see as a better fighter than Joshua. Fury is the lineal champion and the guy to beat right now in the heavyweight division to be crowned as the number one guy. So as you can see, Mr. Uh, retard Scott Guilford believes that Fury is the number one guy. I mean, Fury is the guy to beat, to become, or be considered the, num the number one guy, as you can see. He says, if you beat him, you become the, the number one guy. Well, I hate to break it to Mr. Scott Guilford, but Anthony Joshua is the number one guy. Anthony Joshua is the number one guy. He's the guy with the three out of the four major belts, not Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury was stripped. Tyson Fury was inactive. Tyson Fury disappeared. And by the way... Why, why is he considering Tyson Fury the number one heavyweight in the world? Because he's basically considering Tyson Fury as the number one heavyweight in the world because he's saying if Deontay Wilder beats him, he then becomes the number one heavyweight. So therefore, he's considering Tyson Fury as the number one heavyweight. So my question to Scott Guilford is, why exactly are you considering Tyson Fury as the number one heavyweight? Is it because he beat Vladimir Klitschko? Because I'm, I'm, I'm presuming and I'm guessing that that is the only reason he believes he's the number one heavyweight, right? He believes he's the number one heavyweight because he beat Vladimir Klitschko. Well, why aren't you calling Anthony Joshua the number one heavyweight since Anthony Joshua also beat Vladimir Klitschko? But you see how he doesn't call Anthony Joshua the number one heavyweight? Anthony Joshua has three out of the four major belts and he also beat Vladimir Klitschko, but somehow... Uh, Scott Guilford just turns a blind eye to that and he doesn't consider him the number one heavyweight. But he considers Tyson Fury the number one heavyweight when he beat the same guy in Vladimir Klitschko. And he's been inactive for three and a half years. But somehow he just completely, you know, he just, he just looks at that and he completely turns a blind eye to all the accomplishments that Anthony Joshua did. Right? So it just goes to show you that it's just a biased thing. Uh, the reason he goes around claiming Scott Guilford that Tyson Fury is the number one heavyweight is because he's a biased Deontay Wilder fanboy. And like many Deontay Wilder fanboys, uh, they don't want to give Anthony Joshua the credit. They don't want to say that he is the number one heavyweight. So in order to discredit him, they pretend that another heavyweight is the number one heavyweight. And since Vladimir Klitschko lost to Tyson Fury, despite the fact that Tyson Fury has no belts... They want to portray him as the number one heavyweight. So when, so if Deontay Wilder beats Tyson Fury, then they will say he is the true champion. He is the real heavyweight. That's what I'm saying. I told you guys when Deontay, if the, I told you guys before, if Deontay Wilder beats Tyson Fury, there's gonna be many uh, Deontay Wilder fans or you know fanboys acting as if he is the number one heavyweight because he beat a guy who wasn't a champion because he beat a former unified champion it doesn't work like that in order to become the number one heavyweight you have to have all the belts you can't just be a former unified champion who's been inactive for three years and then consider yourself a heavyweight champion you know mike tyson beat larry holmes a former unified champion right or a former long reading champion but he still wasn't the number one heavyweight until he fought Michael Spinks later that year, right? Because he, he fought uh, uh, Larry Holmes in 1988, and he beat him. And Larry Holmes was a long-reigning champion, right? But back then, there was another guy in the division, which was Michael Spinks. A guy that I believe he was the lineal champion or something. I think he was, he was something like that. It's been a while since I've researched that, but I think he was like the lineal champion. And he was also undefeated. Uh, but Mike Tyson, many people believed he was the number one heavyweight. But he didn't become it until he beat Michael Spinks. When he beat Michael Spinks, he beat all the champions. He was officially the undisputed heavyweight champion. So that's what I'm saying. When it comes to fighters, they have to beat the undisputed heavy. They have to beat all the champions to have and and win all the belts, the major belts, to become undisputed. Mike Tyson did not become the number one champion in the division, the number one guy, the baddest man on the planet, as they say, until he beat Michael Spinks in 1988 in June 1988. That is what. Deontay Wilder has to do in order for me at least or any reasonable or logical boxing fan for him to he has to do that in order to become the number one heavyweight he has to beat the unified champion in Anthony Joshua I mean the yeah yeah the unified champion 
And the same thing goes for Joshua. Once I already consider him the number one guy just because I, I consider him like the guy who's put in the most work. But Joshua has to beat Wilder for me to say he's truly the number one guy. And especially Wilder because of his padded record and his uh, one belt that he's just been defending over and over. And it seems like he has no interest in unifying. That's how it is for me. Be Have all the belts, you'll be the number one guy. I consider Terrence Crawford the number one guy when he was at 140 because he had all the belts. I consider I consider you the number one guy at Cruiserweight because he has all the belts. That's all I have to say. Anyway, guys, I'm out.